everyone it's friday so i thought i would do another friday reads i did this last week for the first time in a long time and i just like this type of video short video just chatting about what i'm reading i'm going to talk about things that i have been reading the last week i did finish a couple things this week but i don't think i'm going to talk today about things i finished i'll save that for my wrap up mostly because i didn't bring the books down here and i have not compiled my thoughts on them yet so let's just talk about what i am been reading this week it's a lot of middle grade march but a couple other things and i'm just in that still in that phase of just starting all the things and not like um i did finish like i said did finish two things but still starting more things i'll split them up by the format so first are my audiobooks something new from last week is i started daring greatly by brene brown um, my husband and I are going to be reading this together. So I read the first chapter, which I didn't put a bookmark in because I bought this after I started it. I listened to the first chapter on audiobook and I realized if we were going to sit down and discuss this, that I wanted an actual physical book to highlight and write in because I kind of understood the what she was talking about in the first chapter, but not enough to then come and discuss it with my husband. So I really wanted to like actually highlight and all that stuff. And um, he had read this prior and that's why he was like, I think we should read it together. Um, he likes, he really likes Brene Brown. I've actually never read anything by her or watched any of her TED Talks. So this is my first experience with her. So I'm excited to be diving into it. Like I said, I liked the first chapter, but I don't remember enough to chat. So got the physical copy, need to this weekend um, write in it so we can chat about that. But liking it so far. I read my two chapters in The Two Towers. I talked about this last week that I'm buddy reading this with my best friend. We're taking our time with it. We read about two chapters every week to week and a half, two weeks, depending on if we like forget to talk to each other. Um, on the phone, we might delay it a little bit, but generally about two chapters a week. And we're at the end of the, I don't know, is it like section three? Like we're about to start book four if that means anything to you that have read this before. Um, and I had mentioned last week some stuff about it, so I don't want to repeat myself, but I will say so far, my favorite part of this book is um, Legolas and Gimli. They are my like MVP for this book so far. I'm not like a big like battle scene person or whatever. And the battle scene that happened recently, the only thing I, I really got out of that was that I love those two because <laughs> I just... I can't stay focused on the action of battle scene when I'm reading about it. I could do better watching it in a movie, but I just can't like really follow battle scenes written other than the fact that they're just great. And I love their friendship and I'm like just super excited to continue to follow them. So yeah, over halfway. So that's exciting. And then my last audiobook is Land of the Cranes. And this is um, written in verse and occasionally there's some pictures. So I do have the book here. I've been listening to it, but then I'll come back and I flip through because there are like little illustrations occasionally. And this was only like a three hour audiobook since it's written in verse, but I've been taking it slow. So it's taking me a while. I could have listened to this in one day, really, but um, it's a hard subject and it like makes me angry and makes me sad. So I'm taking my time. I didn't tell you what this is about, but basically it's um, about this girl that we're following. She's in fourth grade. She lives in California. And her um, parents are not American citizens. And so um, her dad one day gets um, deported. And, you know, like kind of unexpected. Like she, he just doesn't show up to pick her up. And they find out that he's been deported. And then I think later on, and this is all in the description, that her and her mother also get put into a detention camp. And so it's a hard subject because... Yeah, I kind of stopped it for a little bit after her dad got deported because I was just like, it's so heartbreaking to like, that he, she didn't even get to say goodbye to him, like that he just was gone. And then they had to wait until he was like established somewhere in Mexico for um, him to be able to contact with her. And so just was devastating to think of a fourth, fourth grader, like a nine or 10 year old, not knowing where her dad is, not getting to see him. Yeah, it, it's just very devastating to me. Um, but it's you know important things it's well written I am like enjoying it in terms of like think this is a good book but it's also a hard sad topic so 
I'm just taking my time with it. I do really like the audiobook. I think the narrator does great because sometimes in like middle grade narration, I don't like it because it's like an adult trying to sound like a kid and some adults just make it sound really whiny when they sound like a kid. But I thought this adult kind of just has a naturally young sounding voice or at least can make her voice sound naturally young. So I enjoy it as the audiobook and really feel like I'm listening to this child not and I can't think of her name I know she goes by a nickname Batita um but I think her name is like I think her name is Roberta maybe because <laughs> I think she's named after her dad and then goes by Batita but don't quote me on that because since I'm listening to it sometimes I miss those details but yeah that's been good and then I was doing the um ebook of Nevermore but then my ebook got returned so I've been actually just reading it physically now from the library book so I technically don't have an ebook right now that I am reading since this one got returned and can't be renewed um but I'm still making my way through this here's the thing I'm having trouble with this book I am in I'm enjoying it but it is too long for a first book in my opinion first in a, like a middle grade fantasy I think what happens with a lot of these middle grade fantasies nowadays and these series is that they look at like, you know, Harry Potter is this big famous thing. And when you get to book seven, yes, it is huge. You know, what is that? Like 600 pages, seven, I mean, it might even be 700 pages. Yes, but the first Harry Potter book is small. It's what, like 250 pages. And I feel like now series that are being made, it's not like they're trying to emulate Harry Potter, but they're like, oh, well, kids can read a 600 page book. I'm like, yes. Kids can read a 600 page book, but I don't believe that your first book in a series needs to be 600 pages. You know, like something like Harry Potter didn't start getting that big till halfway through the series. And I mean, same way when you look at like Rick Riordan's books, it's not like he wrote the first Percy Jackson book to be 600 pages. And I just don't think that you have to start a series with a huge book. And I think it's actually detrimental. Like I'm an adult, I can read big books, but there's just so many names being thrown at me and that's what I'm having trouble with in this one. I'm enjoying the world building. I, you know, the, the concept and everything, but there are just so many characters just being thrown out. And in those long running fantasy series, you can have tons of characters, but it's not like they're all introduced in the first book. You know, they should be introduced along the way. So you get your core people that you're really learning about whether that's just the heroes, but then also like the like, you know, some of the key professors or whatever, if it's like a school setting. I don't know on this one fully, like it's a society, not like a school. So yeah, there are like, there can be key, like both villains and adults and the protagonist or whatever. But right now they're, they're just throwing out so many characters. And so like every once in a while, I'm like, who is that again? Cause then after they've introduced them, they just kind of talk about them by name but I'm lost about who some of these characters are. And so I think that's detrimental to some of these newer fantasy series that they're looking at popular series and being like, well, those have huge books in them, but it's it shouldn't start out that way in my opinion. Like I feel like you need to start out slow and build your world as you go and add characters as you go. So that's my one complaint with this, but I am enjoying it. But I think that's part of why it's taking me so long because I just am like, who's that? And then I feel like I have to go back. And so it just doesn't flow for me as much as I would like. Um, but yeah, still enjoying it getting, I think I'll go through faster now that I'm physically reading this. And then the other one that I picked up this week, because I just couldn't wait any longer is a la I, I, I looked up how to pronounce this and it seems like I just do it wrong every single time. So I apologize if I mispronounce that it's not a word in Spanish that I am used to saying, you know, there are certain words that you learn in like high school Spanish. This is not a word that I had learned before. And so for some reason I'm having trouble pronouncing it correctly. Um, but this is so good so far. I'm only like three chapters in and I'm already loving it. Um, this is the same author as The Last Contista, which is one of my favorite middle grade books of all time. Um, and so I was really excited to get into her next book. And this is like kind of I don't know if I would, it's like post-apocalyptic basically is like the world has gone through a big destruction and now there's like a, a new buildup of society and um yeah it's really interesting so far it's not 
she's taking time with the world building so I don't know exactly what the whole world is or all the players and I like that I'm starting with the protagonist and his sister and a couple like of what would be kind of categorized as the villain type characters and we're getting to know their dynamics and it's taking its time and I like that because I can I know who these characters are now even in three chapters I'm feeling like I'm really connecting with them and will be excited to follow them where like I said Nevermore I wasn't I'm not quite as invested because I don't feel like it's taking its time introducing the characters. But this man, she gets me like right away invested and because she uses storytelling, it's happening again this one. Um, the Last Quintista was very centered around storytelling. Once again, just in the first couple chapters, we're seeing how storytelling really helps um, our main character with, you know, like raise his spirits. Um, they're basically being used as like, um, I mean, I guess you would say slaves of they are the ones that have to um, work in the fields and they only get a certain certain amount of food based on how much they dig up. So more, it could be, I don't know if you would call it slaves or similar to like um, the feudal system or whatever. But yeah, like they, they work all day long in the fields and only getting um, a little bit of food in, re in return for that. Um, and while he's out in the fields, there's an older man who's telling stories of their kind of like heritage. And I really like that storytelling element and how that like helps him get through his day to day, um, and brings him hope for the future and all that. So once again, focusing on storytelling and characters, and I'm, I'm really loving her writing. Um, yeah. So those are the things that I am reading this week. Um, in terms of stuff that I talked about last week that I, I'm not going to really talk about this week, um, I also have Not Quite a Ghost, and that's because I just haven't picked it up this week. Um, not that I wasn't liking it, I just really wanted to start, um, A La Brijas, um, so I picked this up as my physical book and just kind of set this down, but I will probably continue to go back and forth between the two because I was enjoying that. So once again, I'm basically enjoying everything I'm reading, I'm just starting all the things. That's just who I am. And that's it for me today. Um, let me know what you're reading and if you're enjoying your reading as well. And I'll see you next time. Bye.